This used to be a shoe store where I used to buy shoes. Pretty sure. This used to be the Kingston Tea Garden where I had my first waitressing job way back when, but it's not here anymore. It is a marketplace and eatery, but it is not. Look it up there. Look at the detail in the Victorian building. Isn't this gorgeous? What's the Mohican? I mean, to get, well, it used to be a grocery store. It's now Gerald Salente's office. But it used to be a grocery store, and this is where I would come and get my melons and cottage cheese, which I've talked about. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you. Oh. oh, I really am happy to be you know, here. I used to come here with the gallows on it. So it was... Probably after you left. Pro yeah, because yeah. I left in 72. Yeah, they didn't get it till like 78. Isn't that fun? I yeah. mean, it just is... I'm so glad you bought it. Yeah, we're standing, oh. we're standing right here. Look at it. Yeah. That's where the pizza oven is in the back over there. So the whole place was gutted when I bought it. This is fantastic. Yeah. Isn't and, it? And you saw the gardens and the other buildings over there? No, no we just no. got here, so we just... So this is... Isn't it gorgeous in here? No, look at your right. tomatoes! They a month, a month ago, a month ago they were this big. Oh, look at the peppers in range. Oh yeah, nice. And look what you're looking at over here. The history. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at these stone buildings. Kingston, when it was the first capital in New York State, over 70% of America's Constitution comes from the Constitution that was written there. Yeah, John Jay! Yeah, that John Jay was a judge over there. I mean, the people they have no idea what they have. That's why I own what I own. Nobody wanted these when I had them. I own three of them. Oh, I thought you owned all four. No, that's the, that's the museum that's mostly closed. <laughs> this is 1763. I bought this in foreclosure. And I'm not a real estate guy. I bought them for what they represent. I just gave her total freedom to do what she wanted. Oh, she, and she this is what she created. And that's, uh, you know, once you give an artist yeah, yeah. freedom, Didn't tell it's amazing. Anything to do. Yep. But look at it. Look, you're in another world. It is so <laughs> phenomenal. Starting to understand because this is where I grew up. We were lucky enough to learn how to think yeah. for ourselves. Yeah. And that's what they used to tell you. Think for yourself. Exactly. Before they get mad at me, say Papagallo, parrot. Stop repeating what everybody else is saying. Think for yourself. And then you got get a, you get a fight with your father. You go, you little bastard. He said, you think I'm telling you what I'm telling you because I want you to be like me. I want you to be yourself. Exactly. And I, they were I real agree. fighters. I mean, you know. Oof. And, uh, you know, and they taught you, you know, you better grow up and be yourself. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what it was. I mean, my father always used to say to me, do what I say and not what I do. Yeah. And I used to say, Daddy, that makes no sense yeah. to me. But that was like a normal banter. Yeah. Yeah. And so even when I'm watching and listening to what the central bankers and the politicians are saying, you know, it's like I'm watching what they're doing. And when their actions are not congruent with their words, I know it's a lie. Yep. I go into a Home, a home Depot, a Lowe's, uh, a Staples, and my heart breaks watching the people work there. Mm -hmm. What are their futures going to be? Exactly. And they're all taken over. They had antitrust laws that prohibited that yeah. when we grew oh. up. Yeah, yeah, there was not no, anymore. Yeah, look at the bastards. Where J.P. Morgan Chase gets caught rigging the precious metals market <laughs> right in front of everybody's eyes, a slap on the wrist, and, yeah, they and still they're stop. bigger than bigger. Yeah, they right. still didn't, they didn't stop. stop. Yeah, what do you get? Oh, too big to fail. That's right. America. What? You're going to own nothing, and you're going to be happy. Yeah. And this is the garbage that they're pushing down people's. For people don't want to own homes anymore. Yeah. They want to be renters. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, I don't sure. want to be a renter. Yeah. Do you want to be a renter? Yeah, and with Blackstone yeah. just buying up all those buildings, people right. can't afford. What is the average house? A home over price. Average, average house is three hundred and fifty thousand exactly. dollars. You're making fifteen bucks an hour. You know, we're getting a hernia working at, at Amazon. Are you gonna buy a house? 
this is a trend that started in 2008. You know, they That's pump it. the markets up. And do you think that the corporations give a crap how much they're paying for this stuff? No, because it's either money for free, but it's all on debt. And then they sell that debt to the public. Yeah. So, you know. We own the debt. <laughs> the, the Federal Reserve buying corporate junk bonds. How stupid can you be? Oh, and who's the head of the Treasury Department? Where did she come from? Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Oh, I don't know, Janet Yellen, yeah. she, oh, the Fed? Oh, yeah. We've been in perpetual war since 1989. And I, I did a study once and looking at the, the uh, period of time between the wars and the monetary system leading up in, and then into the wars. Uh, 1913. No. Yeah, but even before That's that, I went way before to the oh, 18, War of 1812. 18. The Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and there was always about a 40 year, roughly, a 40 year space in time when we had peace. And then they would go into war, they would degrade the currency, then they would go to a new central bank system, and they would go back on the gold standard, and you had this period of peace, so people could forget about it. But in 1913, when they installed the central bank, I mean, do you really think it's a coincidence that the era of perpetual central banking and the era of perpetual, perpetual war yep. are one and the same? Yeah, yeah. The banks does. hasn't changed. No. The money changes. The right. money changes. All they care about is themselves. Right. And the profits. And the profits. And, you know, and the illusion of choice. And that's all that choice has really become for most people is purely an illusion. It's not reality because you have just, you know, six entities that own pretty much everything, whether it's the seeds for the food. Yep. And I know that you're really into, yeah. you know, growing the beautiful garden and I'm certainly into growing. But that's also why it's so critically important that we do grow heirloom yep. products yep. and then we share those seeds and so that's part of community yeah. and that's what I see you doing here and that's what the Occupy Peace and Freedom yeah. I mean that's what that movement is really all about we need the community we need the people to take back our power yeah yeah George Carlin said it one big club and you ain't in it yeah exactly <laughs> but we have to create our own club that's right that's and that's doing. what I'm doing exactly and that's what you're doing exactly I work for the uh, a trade association. I was the number two. I at thirty. I I'll show you a picture of me and Ronald Reagan. Thirty years old. I had a pic, I picked him up to Chicago Hilton, <laughs> and uh, took him over to uh, him and Mike Diva to McCormick Place. Two days before he's announcing he's running against Gerald Ford, and I put on a brunch with him and uh, our board of directors on top of the. I was with him for an hour and a half. In those days, you got in a taxi cab, by the way, and, and went. Yeah. And this is he's, this is he's going to announce it. You know, all the, all the media. Two days before. Four, yeah, he's running against Gerald Ford in 1976. Anyway, I was living between Chicago and D.C. At, at 28 years old, I was staying at the Willard and putting my meetings on at the Hay Adams. Wow. Yeah. So I wouldn't know what I know if I wasn't on the other side. Exactly. And then I started growing up. Yep. Took me a lot of years still doing it. You know, it was also Reagan that really formalized perception management when he brought Rupert Murdoch over. That's right. So, you know, we don't realize this, we idealize these people, but there are ulterior motives that hide everything and that it just depends on the spin. So all they, I'm sure, they spend so much time figuring out what they want to do and they spend a lot more time on how they're going to spin it right. to the public so the public can swallow it and believe it. And we have to stop doing that. Yeah. I mean, the, the public. The public. Because, because government's not going to stop doing that. And the central bankers aren't either, because no. their job is to keep you in line and get you to volunteer to be in line. That's their job. So they can't tell you the truth because you'd make different choices. It really is, unfortunately. Yeah, you're right. That's you're hundred percent right. Again, the banksters are in charge, and nothing's changed. Again. So, what do you think is going to happen with the big digital movement and the They're CBD going digital. Seeds? They're definitely going digital, and that's why I've been writing about this for, you know, since it began. And I said, cryptocurrencies are going to keep going up until they take control and they don't want competition, finish. And they're going digital so they know every penny that you spent, where you spent it, what you spent it on, so we can get our tax money because we don't work. We want your tax money. Right. So we get it. We know everything about you. And now we're going to digital, more loss of freedom. Complete loss of freedom. 
because Complete. they can they cannot it isn't just about tracking and pulling out the taxes but if they don't like the way you're spending your money oh, yeah. they can prevent it that's they right can, this is programmable money you know when we had gold and silver that was private and the citizens had control because you didn't like the system you put the gold you pulled the gold out and you created restrictions then they had to get rid of that so then we went into the fiat money where the big experiment was on controlling the rate and speed of inflation because inflation was part of it so you still had some level of privacy in cash you didn't lose you know you lost your purchasing power but at least you had your privacy now they're taking us into a new monetary system where you have no privacy, no privacy. and you have no control no control no privacy we're in charge and look at china because china's, china's spearheading the, it they're, they're the ones right and yep. they're showing you how you, you know they dictate in their in their uh, cbdc experimentation mm -hmm. they dictate where you can spend That's that right. money and what you can spend That's that right. money on and how long that money is actually in existence so you have a period of time in which you're going to spend it or it's going to go away so that means we'll have really global central banks i mean forget we were we we're starting to move away from globalization for me having physical gold and silver outside of the system that's the only way to do it yeah it's the I only agree. way to do it because it's the only semblance of <laughs> privacy and real money that you have and you better hold on to it. The FBI, do you read about this? Oh. Thirty-six million dollars right, in safety deposit back. in in in, Ad in California. Went into bank safety deposit boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally against the look. They'll do anything. anything they want. Years and years ago, I had a client in California, little old lady, and they drilled into her bank safe deposit box. She had the collectible gold coins in there because you can't hold bullion or cash in there. It's classified as hoarding, wow. which is what a horrible thing. And the only reason why she actually knew about it is because she got a letter of apology because she had nothing in there that was illegal wow. or frowned upon yeah, this is, this for is her to it. hold. They've robbed us out of freedom. And that's what we're doing, having a f Independence Day celebration. This yep. is our country. That's why I bought these buildings. And four corners of freedom. Yes. The seeds of democracy was sown here. And I got some little shits telling me what to do. Yeah. And you're the one that's working. And you're the <sighs> one that's producing and creating opportunities. I mean, th we need to go back to that. People are having fewer and fewer opportunities. And my big concern are my grandchildren, oh. great grandchildren, and even my children, but more the younger generations because they're growing up as a norm. You know, we grew up, this was not the norm. So we're looking at these changes and getting upset about them. And privacy, I mean, privacy has been taught out of us. Yep. Well, why not just put it up on the internet yep. for everybody to, I mean, why not? But we need to maintain privacy in order to maintain freedom. It's gone. Do you think we can get it back? If we fight for it. Yeah. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom, said Samuel Adams. So let me show you the other buildings over here. Absolutely. So what's on your agenda for the rest of the day? Uh, much. This was yesterday's trends in the news. I go through the articles and I underline yeah, mm -hmm. the salient points of each story. Think I want to read all this shit? Yeah. No, but you do. Yeah, but I do. Right, to exactly. keep learning. I know exactly what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, it's like it's kind of familiar to uh, yeah. somebody else's office. So, I read all this stuff, and then what I do is I underline all the salient points of the stories. This is one day's worth of work. This is one day. I get that. One day. So, when I talk about things and knowing about them, yeah. 
The other thing that we're doing, Gerald, that is like so near and dear to my heart, and we're expanding this as well. There is a school near us where we went in and built out some garden beds and, were, and put in some food trees and we're working with them on a program so the kids are learning oh, how great, to grow, great. right? Not just, just we do give them food too, but it's not about that, it's them learning how to grow. And we did a big sign and we're, you know, we try and do something really special every month. Because if they have something, I mean, my feeling is if they have something that they are looking forward to every month, then oh, absolutely. it gives them hope. It enable what I really want them to do is learn how to dream. And I think that that's so much of what's lacking these days is that people don't know how to dream. Look, we're lucky because of what we, look at our parents. I exactly. Mean, if you grew up and your mother was a drug addict and you didn't know who your father was, what shot do you have? Exactly. You know. Well, we're trying to give yeah, these kids a yeah. shot. Again, I've been at this for a lot of years, trend forecasting. There's never been a better time for positive change than now. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men since Samuel Adams. And there is a tireless minority. And you unite them and you win. You win. That's how my, heart break, my heart breaks when, when I see the sadness of... Yeah what's happening. Again, it's never been, you know, it's always been here, but where we are now is worse than ever before. The land of opportunity. That's what it used to be. Yes. The land of opportunity. Yes. For me, when you look at things just a little differently, it is amazing what you see. Yeah. I can look at the same chart or graph a thousand times, but if I'm looking at it from a different angle, I always see something that I never saw before. Yep, yep. It's incredible. It's, and, and that's what we're trying to do with people, is just to get them to think just a little differently. Look at things just a little differently. Think for yourself. Exactly. This is the first honey press from our bees. Isn't that like... It's a totally different flavor. Isn't that incredible? Totally different. It's a totally different flavor. Thank you so much. Well, you are very well. Mm. We have very happy honeybees. <laughs>